So today we are going to talk about the storage part. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as I said, this will take a little bit longer than the expected. Okay. Because here we are going to talk about each and every storage part, which mm -hmm. is required for you to understand the storage into the cloud. No. Okay. How Oracle Cloud Infrastructure will help you to store your data. What are the options you have? And accordingly, you can able to use the proper storage for your service. Okay. So first storage type, we have object storage. Mm, so okay. We are going to talk about the object storage. And in this module, we are going to talk about the how the object storage will help you. So we will understand the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure object storage. Then we will talk about the storage capability. So what are the capability we have into the object storage? So okay. let me start with that. Yeah. So the first thing will come into the picture, the object storage. So OCI have different type of storage service, but our focus here is to understand the object storage and then we will talk further into the block storage or other storage or file storage or other storage type. But as of now, we focus on to the object storage. Okay. Okay. So in simple term, if we will talk about the OCI storage service, so object storage is the most important storage which we have. Okay. So object storage and archive storage. Got it. Mm -hmm. So okay. as you can see, here the object storage have the some limitations got it so the service will provide you unlimited capacity with the high durability and you can store objects that are up to the 10 tb so the limit time to time it is changing but as of now just in the object storage you can see here the what is the limit we have 10 tb Getting my point? 10 TB, yes, yes. So if you can see here, the 10 TB object storage we have. Okay. So this storage will offer you 10 TB. Got it. And not only that, 10 TB. So basically, you can choose the object storage with the 1 TB and it will go up to the 10 TB. Okay. okay. So minimum 1 TB you can choose or so on and it will go up to the 10 TB. Of course, okay. less or more depend on to the services, but mostly in the case, the only 10 TB will be allowed for object storage. Okay. In case I need more than 10 TB, is it possible? Uh, different way, not like the direct object storage, but different way we can able to do it. Okay. So what purpose you need a more than 10 TB? That will be a one question from my side. Okay. Because we have a different type of storage. We will talk about file storage. We will talk about the block storage. And accordingly, we can use it. But this storage type, why it is used? That you need to understand. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's not a database storage. Okay, we can go and we can use more than the 10 TB. Generally, on a structured data, how much you are storing? So very less amount. Very less. So on a structured data means like your image, the video, those cases storage, we can use the object storage, mm, okay. which you need a long term archival need. Mm. That case you can use the archive storage. So in simple term, the object storage is a highly durable storage. Okay. okay. So durability is a high. So mm. you can able to use high durable high object which you want to store in that case you can use the object storage it's a scalable and secure not only that it's a cost effective got it so this is basically used for unstructured data so this object storage will be used to store unstructured data into my environment got it okay and as i said it's a high performance storage platform which is offering to you with the different limitations. 
different technique. Mm -hmm. okay. So in simple term, if you can see, there's a two term will come into the picture. Nowadays, <laughs> the capacity for object storage has increased and that will put the unlimited as well. Got it? So it depends. And this archive storage is also a similar type of the object storage where you can store the any thing which you need a long retention. But a long retention means you have a backup file which you need for seven year or 10 year. Those case you can ever to use it. So it's a high performance storage platform. It also have high reliable. The service is designed for availability 99.99%. That means you can uh, store unlimited amount of data in the Oracle object storage. This limit to 10 TB is no more is there because industry is growing. So you can create thousands of bucket per account and each bucket can host the unlimited number of objects. But as I said, the storage object can be as small as zero byte and large up to a 10 TB. Okay, okay. okay. So that's the limitation they have given. Okay, okay. So if you want to store the image, video, or any analytics data, that case it will be very good storage for you. Okay. And this storage service is the regional service. That means you can access the data from anywhere using the object storage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now what type of the access it will be? It has the private access from the OCI resource to the your virtual cloud network. If you remember, we have created a virtual cloud network and there is a service gateway we talk. Do you remember? Yes. Service gateway? Yeah, yeah. So, so based on that service gateway, if the private access is there, you can able to get. You can connect to the object storage, public endpoint, using the private IP address in the private subnet, and also have the cost and performance flexibility using the multiple storage type. So like in the object storage when you will choose there's a multiple options will be there like you want to the standard you want in frequent access or you want for archiver purpose so those way you can able to decide and then you can able to look into that okay. any more point yeah i got so always keep into mind why this object storage is required what are the benefit of this object storage and then how it will be useful for you so no. as I said, these object storage is the more critical. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this has lots of services which I was talking. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a internet scale high performance storage platform you can able to use, and that can be used for unstructured data, like you have seen on the previous slide. Maybe the image, media, video, songs, log, backup, those are the purpose. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Data you can manage with the API, and as I said, the public and private you can decide how you want. And the data you can choose different flavor like infrequent access or the frequent access. So accordingly, the storage type will be the cost effective. Got it? Like SSD drive, or you want a SDD, or you want a low cost storage like the archive storage, which is called the cold storage also. Okay. And it will be used for private access as well as the through the service gateway. Yes. Uh, my one question for doubt for here. Uh, yeah, this object storage we can add to our uh, compute. Yeah, it's a bucket. It's a bucket, and okay. we will create a bucket. And based on the bucket, we can use our data storage. You can able to access from anywhere. Okay, okay. In sense, we can add these things. Yes, yes. So basically, okay. it has a, their own link, and based okay. on that, you can able to use. Okay, and uh, mainly it's using image, uh, media file, log, backup, anything extra for these things? Like you want to store for the videos, you want to store for the image or logs, or even if data with backup. Those all case you can use. But okay. database backup, it will be a little bit costly. So I will prefer to use the instead of this, I will prefer to use the another storage type, which is called archive storage. 
Yeah. So my question is like a user uh, data, like a user uh, main data is saving in uh, the uh, object storage or archive storage. No, no, it's a block storage. Like here you have seen the multiple storage. By default, also every machine which you are created, we have a local NVM that okay. we will talk about later. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So every machine when you are using, they have that local NVM. Okay, 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 okay. Plus, if you remember, we have created a second day the block volume storage. Yes, which yes. We have attached with the, your disk, uh, the instance. Did you remember? Yeah, I know. I know. I, so I, we have then we have it, created a file storage. This all practically we have seen it. If yes. you remember. Yeah, because yesterday also I practiced that book. Okay, so, okay that's great. That's great. Okay. So basically, what I was trying to do, these all are for different purposes. Got it? Okay, okay. Here, our focus should be the object storage first and the archive storage. And then later on, we will talk about the block volume storage. Then we will talk about the file storage. This model, we are just talking about the object storage. Yeah, yeah. but uh, in instance, uh, mainly user data will store in local NVM. Yes, by default. That's the okay. default behavior. Okay, okay. okay. That's the okay. default behavior. And how much space for that? Uh, for which one? Local NVM. Local NVM up to the 52 TB. 52 TB, okay. Oh, okay, 52 TB, yes. 51.2 because partitioning will also take the sum right the billing will happen to 52 db okay okay i understand so if you are using the bare metal service this case if you mm. are using the virtual machine that means 25.6 that means 26 tv billing will happen to you okay, okay. i understood <laughs> okay yeah yeah it's clear please continue now when you are creating this one, so as I was saying, what case you can use? So object storage service basically have the strong consistency, durability, performance, and custom data. Not only that, they have the encryption as well. So in simple okay. term, whenever we are talking about these features of the object storage, so what thing we have to keep into mind? This you can use for the backup purpose, you can use for the data storage, you can use for the big data and Hadoop purpose. So anything which need a, a stores the content repository, like content repository, what? The image, logs, videos, those cases. Got it? That no. is called content repository. No. So content repository, you need a highly available and durable content repository data so that you can able to choose with this. No. Like here, you can see data, image, logs, and videos. You can go to store. This can be also used for the backup purpose or archiving purpose. Mm -hmm. So you can use object storage to prevent or preserve the data for the longer period of time. Got it? Okay. So log data uh, like the analytics. Yeah, okay. please. Yeah, how many years we can store uh, data in uh, object storage? See, as per the Oracle, the Maximum five year. Okay. Got it. Okay. But uh, okay. how we can play? Because we have a customer where the seven year retention they require. Okay. So the backup which we have taken in the one bucket, in the okay. one object storage. Okay. Same, I can copy after the five year the another bucket. And I can, oh, it's, uh, I can sync it. Like I can create another copy of that. So again, five year, okay. like that way we can able to use for multiple years. Okay, then uh, uh, because once we are cre uh, created five year back, then uh, that will copy to one object storage, then automatically next five year also generate. Otherwise, it, we need to sync for both. Yeah, in the in the initial stage, if you want seven year, that is not possible. No, yes, yes, so yes. now let's look some of the use case for the object storage. Mm -hmm. Like okay. here, you can see the content repository or backup or big data or archive. So what I mean, mm -hmm. object storage provide highly available and durable content repository for data. Okay. okay, okay. So wherever you are, are trying to store the data as an image or log or video, that case you can use it. Mm, okay. We can use object storage for store the application log data, like for analytics and troubleshooting purpose, you can also able to use 
and that's why we have mentioned here the log data. Mm -hmm. Are you getting the point? Yeah. So this log data will be used for that purpose. Even if the large set of the data, you can able to use it. So whenever the large set of data you want to store, like the analytics and troubleshooting from application, same way you want to optimize the unstructured or semi-structured data, we can use the primary data repository for this we can use. Plus, we can also able to use for the Hadoop cluster or big data where the large data set we are keeping. So okay. that way we can also able to use for big data and Hadoop support. Okay. So based on that, you can get it and you can easily able to understand how this object storage will be used for your business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. They have the strong consistency. What do you mean by the strong consistency? Object source service always service the most recent copy of data when retrieved. Okay. 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 And the same object storage you can able to like overwrite the data. That is also possible. Okay. Then durability. Definitely you can able to use so data which you can store for redundancy across multiple storage service across multiple AD or the data which is integrated with the multiple purpose corrupted data detection for the auto repair those case also you can use so object storage has the features of durability okay generally people thought ki archive storage or the object storage we will not get a better performance but it's not a truth okay. performance also is very good into the object storage mm, okay you can define your metadata or the key volume pair. So encryption you can able to use by default. It is use the AES-256 algorithm. This is the advanced encryption standard, which you can able to use for encrypt the data, which is kept with the object storage. Mm -hmm. okay. As I said, what happened when you are going to create object storage? So the first thing will come into the picture. Whenever you are going to create the object storage, so there will be a bucket you need to create. Bucket is like a place where you are keeping your storage. Okay. Okay. That is called the bu bucket. Got it? Okay. So whenever you are going to use the object storage, there will be must be a bucket, which is called the resource. So the first construct the namespace, that means the container and bucket you require got it so yeah. at the time of account creation each tenant is assigned one unique object storage namespace got it okay. so like your account has created and that time you have got the one unique object storage got it mm, okay. and your data will be stores into that so the first thing will come into a picture we have a namespace so and then we have the resources. So that way you can able to get the namespace. What is the namespace and why we require? See, whenever we talk about the object storage, so as I said, while you will get the account, at the same time, you will get the namespace. Got it? So data that you store in object storage is stored as the object along with its metadata. Okay. So, how it works? For that, we have a bucket. Like here, you can see the bucket. What is the bucket? Bucket is basically a logical container which stores your object. Okay. It. So, data that you store in the object storage is stored as an object along with the metadata and how within a bucket we have. So, okay. bucket is the basically logical container for a storing object. <laughs> And okay. what should be the one thing you can keep into mind? The bucket name should be always unique. Got it? Okay. So it's not only unique for you, it's unique for the other customer also. So within a tenancy, uh, basically they are using that bucket name plus your tenancy. That's the uniqueness they are keeping. Like I am keeping the my bucket. Maybe you can also use the my bucket. Somebody else can also use the my 
his bucket. Am I correct? Yeah. So those cases it will use. So you can create a bucket name. What it like the my bucket or demo bucket. Depend on the your location, maybe the India waste in the Mumbai region or maybe in the your Abu Dhabi region or maybe in the US region, wherever you want to choose. That means you cannot create another bucket with the same name. Like suppose I have created a my bucket. So my bucket name I cannot create in the Mumbai region again. You can create a bucket with the same name. The my bucket into the south like the India. We have a Hyderabad or maybe you have a Dubai. Got it. So Dubai, you can choose the bucket name as a my bucket and Abu Dhabi also you can choose a bucket name as a my bucket. But in Dubai, you cannot create the two bucket name as the same like my bucket or demo bucket like that. <laughs> Understood? Yeah, it's clear. So it's you are talking about that bucket in in our talent only in outside talent we can create because if I am handling two three other talent so other talent we can create a uh, same yes, yes, yes. That, that yes okay. yeah okay that is possible. and one more thing is a uh, public uh, we can assign public IP address for this thing and outside user also can use this thing yes yes okay 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 so any company will do like that because outside uh, users also can access their See, files. It's like a storage. It's like oh. a storage. So yeah. how you want your storage should be accessed? Do you want outside? No. You can use the service gateway and you can never to get it. Oh. If you don't want, you can use oh. it as a private. Okay. okay. It's a service. Okay. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. So how the naming will happen? The object naming you can see. So basically, whenever you are creating the any object, got it? So the object storage have the end point, like you can see here in the image, what it have. So basically, you can use the create, and that time it will ask what type of object storage you want to create. Do you want the standard and archive? So mm -hmm. archive have the beta disk. Oh, sorry, the standard, like SSD and uh, SDD you can get. But archive have the low cost storage, got it. <laughs> Similar like before that, it will look like this way. So object storage, like the object storage namespace, and then your bucket name. And below that, you have an object name, which object you want to keep it. Got it. So here you can see the, your object, then the bucket, and then you can have to get the idea. Okay. Okay. So, like here is the, your object storage name space, then the bucket name, and then your object name. And when user is going to access, so it will access like that the URL you will get your bucket, and then you can get your data. So, that way people can access with the URL. Now, whenever you are defining the object storage, you should be very clear about the bucket name. You should be very clear about namespace name. Got it. And then you can able to access it as per the your region name. And that is the way it will work. Okay. So they have the different type of characteristics. They have a different type of things which you can keep into the mind. And accordingly, you can able to use it. Mm. So always object storage design for highly durable. As I said, because it provides you 99.999 up to 5. Redundancy across the different availability domain for the regional with the multiple availability domain. And in case of the region with the single availability domain, it stores the object redundancy across the three different all domain. Got it? Okay. So that way, as a customer, you can get it. So in the hot and the cold, you can decide whenever you are creating the bucket. Okay. okay. So the hot bucket is basically the more crucial, but 
whenever you require, you can use it. If you don't require, you can delete it. So it's a fast, immediate, and frequent access that you can keep into the hotter storage. Okay. Okay. But this is the questions you may get into the during your exam. I forget yes. to ask you how the preparation is going for your exam. Yeah, because I between I got some uh, this interview, so I not get study for this uh, exam. So once this course is completed, I will again I will start because I am right now watching your video one or two times again again, and I am preparing for the complete this course properly. So no that that Cuber yesterday I watched that Kubernetes because you last uploaded that things, so it will take time to understand all the details in night because I need to do practice everything. So both cannot I cannot do because exam and this preparation. Okay, no problem. So, so once I complete uh, this course, I will again I will prepare because that time I almost prepared, but uh, I I got one interview call so. That uh, everything I yeah preparation no for interview no I taken a lot of time so that okay no problem so while we are going to create the object storage that time we can see these storage tile what type of tile you are choosing the hot and cold so cold basically means the archive storage and hot means the frequent access data we can keep into there okay so you can choose the standard or archive standard or archive. So basically, if you are using the archive storage, which is called the cold storage, so minimum billing will happen for 90 days. That means you have stored the one GB and then you deleted the file. Still, Oracle will charge you for 90 days okay. because the retention is minimum 90 days. Got it? Okay. So object need to be stored before the download. Got it? So object need to be restored before download. So archive bucket cannot be upgraded to the standard storage style so these are the some questions you can feel during the interview during the your exam so standard mm. storage style will be or the hot storage style will be always a better but it is more costly got it okay. it has a fast immediate and frequent access the object storage service always serve the most recent copy of data whenever you will retrieve data retrieve is intensely but a standard bucket cannot be downgraded to archive suppose you have decided the standard and later on due to the cost you want to go for the archive storage that is not allowed vice versa same way you have chosen the archive storage and that you want to upgrade to the standard that is also not possible mm. so archive storage in which case people will use archive storage generally we use where the read access is very less okay mm. like I want to store the data for the archiving purpose, but infrequent access data. So rarely access, like once in a year, maybe like that type of data we can able to do. Object mm -hmm. need to be restored before download. That is, and archive mm -hmm. bucket cannot be upgraded to the standard storage. Okay, okay. What is the time frame? Time to the first byte. So after archive store is restored, request is made. After four hours, you can able to get it. So that's the standard way you can have to get this storage. Now, what are the capability object storage has? As I said, the capability part into the object storage, so object storage is designed for high durable that provide you the 99.99 SLS and that's where it has the capability. Got it? Okay. So, Whenever you are using it, you can able to manage, you can able to do, and you can get that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It has the replication, it has their own retention or rules. These all you can define as per the your need. Okay. 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 Now pre-authenticated request. That means it provides you the way for access the bucket object without having their own credential. So that is the way pre-authorization request you can able to do. Like I want some users can directly access like the my data should be kept and that authentication I don't want. So that case you can able to do it. So whenever you are defining 
you can decide what is the access type you want. So permit read on the object or you permit read and write both or only the right. Got it. So during the creation pre-authorized request, you can able to decide which users what privilege I want to give them. Okay. Got it. Which object I want to use as a read only, which object I want to write only, which object I want to read and write. Those all like here you can see the image. So that way you can decide pre-authorized request. Okay. Public bucket. So at the creation time, bucket can be considered private and access to the bucket required authenticated and authorization. They are supporting with the, but the public means read access to the bucket you are giving them and you can able to use it. Okay. Now, as I said, this object storage is the regional service, but I want the data which is captured there should be capped into the other region also. So those mm -hmm. can be possible and that we can able to use like the object copy. Got it. So okay. which is called the original copy or object copy with the bucket. Mm -hmm. So okay. that way we can able to use that's the way we can able to use the object copy field this. Mm -hmm. okay. So you can decide how it will work. So using the object copy, you can copy the object to the other bucket in the same or to the bucket in the other region and that is the way you can able to do. So mm -hmm. In short, the object or storage service handle the copy request with the synchronously. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So please make a note that the object cannot be copied directly from the archive storage. Got it? Okay. Okay. As I told you, from archive storage first you need to download and then you can do it. That okay. means the copy operation also does not automatically create the bucket. Mm -hmm. When the object is copied, the destination object receive as a new tag. Got it. Got it. So it depends on the rule. You can see, okay, this is the by destination name space. This is the by destination region, and then destination bucket, and then you can see here what mm -hmm. rule you want. This rule can be override depend on the and as I said, the, they will get the automatically tagging when it is copied. Got it. So always yeah. make sure, as I said, the object when copy, the destination object receive as a new e tag value over there. But this is called e tag match. So that way the value will be a stores. Okay. So 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 other region, they if uh, anybody want to uh, see this uh, storage detail, so it's also possible. Yeah, it's a possible cross region we can able to copy because okay. this storage is the regional service. So I have a Mumbai region and I have a Hyderabad region, just example in India. Mm -hmm. So whatever the data I kept in the Mumbai, that is the for Mumbai only. Okay. But I want the data should be copied to the Hyderabad region. So this case, the cross region copy, you can able to use it. Okay. So basically it is called the so Basically, it is called the object copy or the cross copy. You can say cross region copy. OK, yeah. so that's why and we need to put public IP or uh, anything we need to do for this thing. No, no, no. It's a service gateway through that you can able to access. No public IP is mandatory. If you okay. want a public IP for that compartment or the other uh, services, you can. But generally it's not required because it is accessed via the service gateway. Am I correct? So same yeah. VCN people can use it. Okay, and one more doubt is there is you already updated uh, directly we not cannot copy data in archive. So no, the, no, no. Okay, okay. Suppose so, you have an object storage and uh, where the data has kept. What is uh, okay? And uh, you want that data should be used. That okay. is not allowed. Okay. Object cannot be copied directly from the archive storage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is okay. So the copy operation also does not automatically create the bucket. Mm -hmm. When the object is copied, you have to before that you have to create your these all the things what you have seen here, like the your region you have to choose then destination bucket on that region. These all you have to create and then you can choose it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we have a tagging. 
What is so there is a four default rule is there. Like override the destination object. Do not overwrite any destination object. Override the destination object only if the match specific e tag or copy the object only if the source match with the specific e tag. So these are the four rule different override rules are there. So override destination object. Do not override any destination object. Override destination object only if it is match with the specific e tag and copy the object only if the source match the specific e tag. Okay. So the first override rule is saying the override destination object. That means it is a default option. Okay. Which you can able to use and we can able to get it. Got it. Got it. it can use for any copy operation. You can use the option when you do not want to limit a copy operation by the e tag value. In that case, you can use this option. Okay. What is the first option? The second option, if you do not want to override any destination object, like suppose I have a one image, the same image I don't want to override. But mm -hmm. it's because unnecessary, my storage will be used, the previous data will be lost. So if you don't want to override, the second option you can choose. Mm -hmm. okay. So this will basically prevent the using the overwriting the existing copy of the object. <laughs> okay. Then we have a third option, which is saying override the destination object only if match the specific e tag. Got it? Mm -hmm. okay. So when the e tag will match, then only it will override. Otherwise, it won't. That means the third option is saying when you use that to copy operation only success when the e tag you specify with the initial copy request will match with the e tag of the my destination object. So okay. that means when you go for this option, use the option to prevent the accidental override. Got it? Okay. Because e tag is matching. So that way you are not overwriting it. And the last option which you can see here, which is called copy object only if the source match the specified e tag. So no. this is the my last option, which is respect the copy object only if the source match the specified e tag. That means you want a copy operation to be successful only if my e tag, which you supplied while initializing the copy request that is matching with the e tag of my source object. In that case only it will be allowed. Okay. So what the benefit you will get from this? That means this will ensure that only the specific version of object will be allowed to be copied. Okay. Got it. So in short, I am just recapping it. What I told you, you can provide a destination namespace, destination region, bucket, object name, then mm. destination storage type, and then override rule. You have to select one of them. Then you can able to copy it. Okay. Did you got the idea? Yeah, yeah. Just give me one second. Okay. Okay. So now what I'm going to do here object lifecycle management. So as I said, the retention you can choose how much time you want. Got it. Okay. So the object life cycle will depend on to the your policy. So that is called like the retention use. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, you as a DBA, you can decide the your retention policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 How long, how many days you want that object should be kept over there? What are the things are there? So these all you can decide. As per the your business need. Mm -hmm. Getting my point? Yeah. So that is the way you can able to use the retention. Mm. So it depends on the your requirement. You can decide what could be the your retention policy you want. How your retention will be valid. Mm. 
got it so that way you can able to keep the object life cycle management like here you can see delete object when after the 30 days mm -hmm. so those way you can decide that after 10 days or after 100 days it's your requirement you can able to plan you can able to do it okay. now managing multi part upload this is really a good and you will get the questions during the your exam okay. mm. which is called multi part loading okay so multi part oh. upload so why multi part and what is the benefit of that the simple logic behind it the multi part means we are going to use the multiple options with a smaller file to load my data and that's the purpose which is called multi part load okay okay it so in simple term whenever we talk about the multi part load we have to keep into mind that making my file to be in the smaller part got it okay so we can initiate the load with the small small so multi part upload data is the parallel which is the faster and more efficient than uploading a large object in a single upload am i correct yeah but it's, so uh, it's available where is... Sorry. it's available for all the storage only for one storage is on multi part no, no, it's not available for all the storage just okay. focus on two object storage but we are talking okay mix everything together Okay. Oh, okay, sure, sure, sure. Because multi-part upload will be available with the object storage. So you can see okay. with multiple multi-part upload, individual part of the object can be uploaded in parallel to reduce the amount of the time you spend during the uploading. Okay. There's a that is the part you can do with the 50 GB max. Got it? And okay. you can use one to ten thousand. Part for the one file, got it. So you mm. can create the object part as per the your business need. Mm. Okay. So if a multi-part upload fail for any reason, instead of restarting the entire object, you will only need to retry uploading the part which has failed. That's the beauty of that. Suppose just example, you are up uploading the two TB of data. After the 1.8 copy, there is some issue came. Maybe network, maybe the storage has full or X Y Z reason. Your storage got failed what happened again you have to upload those 1.8 tv which was already copied earlier am i correct yeah but with the help of multi-part upload only suppose out of 2 tv 1.8 tv is uploaded which 200 gb has flopped or failed that only we can load it got it so that's the beauty of the multi-part upload is there yeah, because if uh, balance details only, we need to upload a second time. Yes, in case of the single. In case. So initiate okay. and upload, initiate a multi part upload by making a create multi part upload REST API call. That means you are defining where this REST API will need it. So you can hmm. lifecycle policy rules automatically delete any uncommitted or failed multi part route, and that way you can able to get it okay so you can use like the 10 mb or 1 mb so depend on that you can able to decide it so it could be as small as 10 mb and as big as 50 gb mm. not more than 50 gb not less than of course of course less than 10 g 10 mb will also possible because suppose i have the only 1 kb file or 1 mb that can be also uploaded but that case why i will go for the multi part am i correct so multi part generally we are doing when we have a file bigger size okay. am i correct yeah yeah so you can upload the object part commit multi part upload work so as per your choice you can able to see what are the multi part load how we are going to use it and accordingly you can get it Mm -hmm. Okay. Always make sure you can choose the maximum number of the part to be uploaded in the parallel. 
we don't have to perform the any commit after the upload is completed mm-hmm. so those all the things you have to keep into mind and then you can decide it a multi part load what idea yeah i got multi part upload details so that's about the okay. this object storage and i hope you understood the concept any yeah. doubt yeah. any questions then feel free to ask mm, no right now i don't have any questions so in this case we can go for the demo of this okay okay sure, okay, sure. I can go for the demo.